I am a YouTube star. I am. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this one. Okay. This one's gonna be scary. This one is gonna be scary. Hey, Uber. Hey, friends and neighbors. Uh, kind of excited today because we're finally getting to the sway bar upgrade for the Axial Bomber and we're going to see if we can't make it a little bit fun. Got to have a few things, your tools, the kit, thread locker, all right, got to have the car and a good attitude doesn't hurt. Let's see if we can uh, make it all work. The reason this one's going to be pretty scary is uh, because there's no directions. So you got your uh, your front sway bar kit, right? You got your rear sway bar kit. Now I'm assuming that that's the case because uh, one of them has an F on it and the other one has an R on it. So F must stand for front and R must stand for rear. And if it doesn't, then um, I will be surprised. I think we're going to start with the uh, front one. And um, uh, to, to be honest, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I did find an RC channel from some feller that uh, obviously knows more about it than I do. I'm going to put a link down in the description of this video because it walked me through it step by step and I don't want to steer you guys wrong and I don't want to lie to you. So full disclosure, I am an honest feller. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be easy for this guy. That's okay. We're going to get through it and forward we will go. So we're going to start by laying out all these different parts here. Got some doohickeys. I'm not real good at memorizing what these parts are. For now, we are going to be calling each and every one of these parts a doohickey or a thingamajig or this or that. So bear with me, okay? Looks like we have two choices here for the crossbar on the uh, front sway bar system. And I will be going with this one that doesn't have the indent in it for strength. Okay, so there's four of these. It looks like there's four of these little holes to deal with. So right now we'll put these together. It looks like we've got four, eight, nine, ten of these O-rings to deal with. So maybe there's a couple of them that are going to have something to do with something over here. But for now I'm gonna guess that eight of them belong on this part here and I hope you guys can see that. If you can't then I don't know this video is gonna suck. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, look at that. Look, look what's going on back here. That right there is why I'm doing this video right now. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of, uh, what, what do they call that? Um, serendipitous? Is that, is that the appropriate word for this? I don't know, but it's kind of cool that that's happening right now, even as we are putting these parts together. There's the first one. Let's uh, keep moving forward here. Really a good day today here in Eric land for this kind of a project because it's um, really cold outside. Don't want to do anything outside. It is a day off from my my real job. Yeah, for those of you who uh, think that I do this for a living. Yeah, right. Now I've got a real job. It's one of those it's one of those I go to it because I need the money kind of jobs like most of us have out there, right? Now I've got these parts here. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go back to my reference video that I've been using to figure all this stuff out. And through the miracle of editing, I will be right back in about a second. Step one is pretty much complete, and that step involved me putting these parts out and determining what parts go where. I will, I will let you in on a little secret. This part right here, these two parts and this cross member, 
were very difficult to put together. Difficult in terms of RC toy kind of work, okay? It wasn't something that they just slid on by themselves. I had to tap them on with a little bit of force. So be forewarned, you may wind up having that kind of situation too. It's not something that just went together as smoothly as uh, butter. Anyway, this is where it goes and you want the flat side of this cross member facing up relatively to these parts facing down, okay? And the reason for that is when you put this part on there, then the screw, they actually call that a grub screw, I've learned recently, this will seat right on that flat spot. I will suggest to everyone out there, anytime you're using uh, metal screws in metal parts, we don't want the red stuff I learned the hard way that the red stuff is very difficult if you need to take screws out later on. Yeah, this is a red package, but it's blue, okay? It even says blue on the tube. All right, what we've got here is these parts go on there. The grub screws go into those parts to tighten those down. These short screws are going to attach the assembly to the frame of the car. Okay, that would be this thing. This is the car, those of you that didn't know. These will attach down here. These silver washer thingamajiggies with the cone will go there. The longer screw will go through those parts and screw right into there. These are threaded, so the screw itself is going to go through these two parts and then thread right into there. And again, if you're going to go metal, inside of metal, use the blue Loctite or whatever other brand you prefer. I happen to have Loctite. Why don't we push pause again through the miracle of editing we will um, be back in about a second. Here we go, we're back. Uh, what is this, step three, step two? Some step. Anyway, you can see here that I've got this more or less assembled before I attach it to the car. There are a couple of mounting points right here on the chassis, okay? Now those two spots are where these two pieces go. All right, now it's gonna go in you can see that these parts have kind of a downward curvature if you're holding it like this, and they go right in like so. These holes line up with these holes. These are plastic. I'm not going to need any Loctite for that. The screws themselves will thread the plastic. You just gently put it in there. Um, of course, you, you don't really crank on it. If you're a monkey like me, and you've stripped a few of these uh, plastic holes before, then you realize you don't have to like really crank down on it. It's just RC tight, okay? It's not, it's not real car tight, it's just RC car tight. I will get this uh, two screws put in and then we will see if we can move forward. I discovered once I put this assembly into the car, this part was a little bit too tight this assembly here has to move pretty much as freely as the shocks would go up and down. Okay, so when I put it together, it was really too tight. Like I said earlier that I actually had to tap these on. So what I would suggest, if you come across that situation with your kit, maybe use some fine grit sandpaper first on that uh, cross member, just to make sure that these parts move Freely. I had to uh, put a little bit of WD-40 on it, just kind of work it that way, but I think I got it nicely loosened up now. Forward we go. We want to attach these parts to the chassis, and that is right there. Okay, so it already has a screw and a little uh, ball joint thingamajiggy. I don't know what it's called, but whatever, it's a thingamajig. So you pull the original screw out. I don't think you reuse the original ball thingy. I've already attached this side. So you can see right there how that works. Right in there, right? So now I'm gonna attach this side and we'll see how that works. Okay, so 
we got the front sway bars attached and this is what it looks like when it is all complete. I'm going to go ahead and claim victory on this one. Unfortunately, I don't have the um, opportunity today to uh, take it outside and find out for sure, but it looks good. It um, seems like everything is moving the way it's supposed to, and I guess we're going to find out. But uh, for now, let's go to the last part of our project and um, this this one's probably going to be a lot easier it seems like there's fewer parts and um, well we're about to find out okay hey what are you guys watching wow that's kind of cool looking I like his videos I, I don't know about you guys but I really like his videos now um, this one doesn't really have fewer parts, like I said earlier. I think it's two less parts, two fewer parts, two less parts. I don't know. I don't know how to speak English, so just kind of bear with me. We've got uh, a choice of this one or this one, uh, cross member, whatever. I think that's what you call that. And again, I'm going to go with the one that does not have the little uh, indentation or whatever in the center of it. So we're going to put that aside, get that out of our way. We're going to use this. We're going to use this thing, of course those those whatever they are um, here's a couple of dog bone looking things these things look kind of like dog bones I know they're not really dog bones so don't feed these to your dog we've got uh, four of these ball joint thingamajiggies a couple of grub screws couple of plastic spacers I guess is what these are we saw these two cone uh, indented washers okay from the last assembly uh, a couple of screws and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of these o-rings now for the front assembly i only used eight o-rings and my uh the cheater video that i've been using didn't say anything about the two extra ones so um hopefully i didn't uh make an o-ring mistake Fortunately, we're not building rockets here or space shuttles. Uh, look it up if you don't understand that reference. Now we're going to assemble it here on the workstation and uh, we'll move forward from there. And here it is. This is the rear assembly. The parts are very similar to the front. Uh, only a little bit of difference there. The cross member right here actually has to go through the, the chassis or the frame, whatever you call that part. Um, so I didn't put any um, thread locker on these grub screws. All right, they're just in there right now um, just for reference, okay? Again, two extra O-rings. I don't know why. Anyway, same type of screw and um, washer assembly down here. I will attach it to the frame. There are a couple of mounting spots. Hope you can see those from there. There's one right there and opposite side. I will get that mounted and in about a second, we'll uh, come back and um, show you guys what it looks like and how it works. This is what it looks like after it is assembled. Here we've got, you can see where I attached that part to that part. There, 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 and there. Now on these mounting brackets here on the frame, there's little teeny tiny grub screws in there. Don't tighten those down. You don't have to necessarily take them out, but loosen them up because you want this cross member to be able to move freely. Okay, if you tighten those down, then you're going to make this assembly a little too tight. So keep that in mind. Looks pretty good. Looks, uh, looks pretty legit. I don't know much about it, but I can't wait till I get to go out and test it and see if it actually did improve the vehicle. I think it did. Here we've got the complete car reassembled. Shout out goes to Exo Caged. RC. I hope I don't get in trouble for uh, linking to his video. I hope he doesn't get upset that he's going to be associated now with such a lame RC guy. But uh, I figured I have to give him some credit because I really did use his video as reference. If you are interested in getting the same sway bar kit that I used on this vehicle, 
It is the Hot Racing part number RRT331601. And it is a uh, torsion sway bar set for the Axial Bomber. This concludes our, our day's experience. I hope you guys uh, at least uh, got something out of it. Um, again, leave a comment down below. I know you, know, you can subscribe if you want. You can uh, like the video, of course, but leave a comment for sure. If you think I'm lame, that's okay too. Just tell all of your friends to check out how lame my videos are and have them leave comments as well. Um, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, let's, um, let's get together some other time and we'll have some more fun, okay? All right. Thanks for watching.